Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for joining us in the next session of Arabic Unlock Summit. We're excited to present Ustaza Amina Muyala Botich, the Student Affairs Coordinator at Jannah Institute. Ustaza Amina has finished her bachelor's degree at Faculty of Islamic Studies in Sarajevo and is currently an MA student at the same college at Islamic Europe Department. She has specialized in teaching Quran, mashallah. She has specialized in teaching Quran alphabet and Tajweed since 2013. And currently teaches the Quranic Alphabet course at Jannah Institute and Tafsir and Hippie's course at Center for Education and Research, Nahla in Bosnia. And that's where you're based, right? Ustaz Amina, welcome. Thank you very much for for inviting me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to everyone who is joining us today. Uh, yes, alhamdulillah, I'm from Bosnia and I'm just joining from Bosnia as well. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So today, um, Ustaz Amina will be sharing some practical tips for adults who want to learn the Arabic alphabet. And I know that this is a topic that many Muslims are shy to talk about because especially when they're adults and, you know, this is something that they should know and uh, and they feel, you know, scared to approach um, uh, on learning an alphabet. So Ustaz Amina has been teaching Arabic alphabet since she was uh, in high school, I believe. Is that correct? Exactly. Yes, Mashallah. exactly. So she would be full of practical tips and uh, that's exactly what we're going to listen to in her upcoming presentation. So inshallah, let's now watch the presentation and then uh, we'll come back for question and answer with her. Bismillah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dearest brothers and sisters uh, my name is Amina Muyala Botic I come from Bosnia um, and Alhamdulillah, I will, be, I will be sharing some tips and tricks or some advice on learning the Arabic alphabet for all of you who are either struggling with learning the Arabic alphabet or you have just started your journey and you need some advice or you are even just thinking about even starting the journey and you don't know where to start. Um, Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed me with uh, teaching the Arabic alphabet since I was in high school, since I finished, alhamdulillah, the Islamic madrasa here in uh, Bosnia. So um, throughout the years, as we, as I have studied many groups of sisters, alhamdulillah, um, uh, uh, the Arabic alphabet, the 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 tajweed, the, the sciences of the Quran in general, uh, I have come to a couple of uh, tips or some advice that uh, I noticed that was very beneficial for many of my students. So inshallah, I will try to share these with you today. Uh, and may Allah give us barakah in what is coming for all of us. And may Allah make it easy for uh, everyone who uh, is listening to this or who is going to, uh, inshallah, start their own journey of Arabic alphabet and reading the Quran or Arabic, learning the Arabic language in general. Um, my first advice or the first thing that I always talk about when I start a new course of Arabic alphabet is why are we learning this? So what is the intention behind me learning the Arabic alphabet? And the, always there is a verse in the Quran in the Quran that pops out and I always share it with the students and that is وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ We have made the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the Quran easy for remembrance. So, and he's asking us, so is there anyone who will remember, who will be reminded? So why am I learning the Arabic alphabet? What's my intention? Intention is very important in, in our deen in general, as you already probably know, as that is kind of something that uh, makes a regular deed, let's say cooking, cleaning, um, going outside, walking, any part of my day, every part of, part of my life makes it an act of worship. So the question is, how can I make my journey of Quranic alphabet or Arabic alphabet an act of worship that will be uh, dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that will be uh, put in, the, in, in my book of good deeds? And the main and the most important thing when when we start the whole new journey of learning the Arabic alphabet is to be to be reminded 
to learn this for the sake of Allah, for the sake of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he has promised us in the verse that I have just recited that if we make an intention to learn the Quran or anything that approaches us to the Quran in general because of him, to remember him, that he will make that process easy for us. Subhanallah. This doesn't mean that we will not have challenges, but we will always stay strong on that path as we know that why we are learning this, as we have that strong conviction and strong willingness in our hearts that I'm doing this to get closer to Allah. So uh, this is a reminder that we constantly need to remind ourselves for, I'm talking about myself first, and then I always share it with my students as well. Because sometimes in our lives, we kind of get so busy and we start overthinking. We start um, kind of getting too deep into so many things that we forget why we're doing something to, or we forget to even make an intention at the beginning. And that's a very important, very important thing in the whole process of learning Arabic alphabet. Um, the next thing that I usually share with my students is that uh, you're learning a new language. This is a completely new alphabet that you have, many of you have never even um, studied before. And in this whole process, the my usual advice to my students is that you usually you need a teacher to teach you the Arabic alphabet. You can start or you can try learning on your own. And I have had many, many students, both in Bosnia and the United States and all around the world who have said, OK, I have tried to learn this by myself. I have tried to um, uh, to pronounce, to read, to write any part of the Arabic alphabet on my own and from many kind of resources. But the issue is that there you need a teacher who has gone through the whole process uh, of learning just as you have so that she or he can share the what uh, the the struggles that she had or the advice for the struggles that you might may have to be so that you it can be easier for you there is a baraka in learning the arabic alphabet or quranic alphabet with a teacher as as the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said iqra'u kama ulimtum iqra'u quran recite the quran just the way you were taught and he has, and every word that, that comes out of the, the mouth of the Prophet ﷺ is barakah. So he's teaching us that um, that in if I have a teacher, there is going to be that's useful for me. The I'm go, it's the process is going to be much easier for me in in general. So uh, if you don't have a teacher, try to find some someone in either your local masjid or online. You have many many options these days, etc. So uh, having a teacher is very very useful in the whole process of uh, learning the Quran or of learning the Quranic alphabet. Um, next thing that I usually share with my students is that. Um, just as it is important to have a good intention and learning in a group and learning with a teacher, it's very important to stay consistent, to do, let's say, your homework very like, regularly. Um, very, very often, some students like tend to um, to 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 do like, OK, we they join the class, they come to the classes regularly and they do whatever is required in the class during the, the session of the live session of the class. However, after the class passes, they usually, okay, they wait until the next class and then they join, join again. And then what that's the when they again learn or study in general. That's not how this process works, unfortunately. Um, the teacher cannot teach you the whole journey if you just join in the class and that's the only time when you're learning. You have to do additional effort where after the live session ends do either you're in the in the message that you're attending or online you have to practice regularly because that's what's going to give you the uh, smoothness in your recitation on your reading in uh, that's going to perfect your pronunciation of the letters that's going to help you through that whole journey practicing regularly that's what I always say to my students don't just come to the class and uh, and practice here in the class after we finish the class that's when you should open again the book or the materials that we shared and that's when you should 
again, review, review whatever we have covered. That's go what's going to help you. And then the next class, usually the students prepare either questions. If they have any struggles, they usually share it, etc. So that's in general what helps them uh, very, very much. Um, also, studying in a group helps a lot. Um, individual like one-on-one uh, -on -one classes are also very good but if you are part of a group um, there is you there are these components that are kind of very special when you start learning in a group of other students and that is for example first of all if you're struggling with something and let's say you are shy to ask a question or share a struggle with the teacher there is usually that one student or more of them who are not very shy to ask <laughs> which is very good let's say um, and they usually when they ask, um, then you are reminded. Oh, that's that's also what was that what that's also what was not very clear for me as well. So you can benefit from their questions as well. Or if you pose a question, ask a question your to your teacher, um, and then she answers it. That question can benefit the other students as well. Also, the uh, the mistakes or the um, the struggles that the other students can have. That can help you a lot as you can learn, not only from the teacher, but now you're learning from your classmates as well. As that process also uh, is, is uh, the, the whole recitation point of the whole class is helping each other. Um, and the each of the classmates kind of learn from each other and not only from the teacher, subhanAllah. And the last point if I want to make that I want to make here is that um uh, the sisterhood or the brotherhood that is made that is made after uh, or throughout these whole courses of learning the Arabic alphabet or Quranic alphabet uh, is unbelievable. Subhanallah, the bond that is made between the students is beautiful because they kind of uh, continue their journey of sisterhood even after or brotherhood even after the course finishes. Um, they are kind of become really close friends or they join some new courses of let's say Islamic studies together, they meet each other, etc. So that's a bond that is created through learning something that gets you closer to Allah is not comparable to anything else. As that kind of a bond um is not um conditioned by any interest, at least not of this world. It's an interest that is connected to Allah, interest that is connected to the Akhirah, to the next world. So that's what makes this whole process very, very beautiful and uh, very special. Also, um, throughout the whole process, make a lot of dua for yourself and for your classmates as well. Uh, Allah will make it easy for you, but you have to ask him. And the whole process of learning the Arabic alphabet is going to have its ups and downs. That's how it whole whole thing works some letters will be very very easy for you to learn to understand to write to memorize to read etc but some letters are very challenging um and i have had students who uh like were like let's say these letters uh, like um like letters khabad very easy for them but when they joined let's say when they started learning the Hamza etc it was very hard for them to understand that point so um, that's the whole process not everything is going to be like very smooth for everyone and that's completely fine and one thing to be reminded of if you are struggling and if you when you start the whole process of learning you start struggling is that okay I will be rewarded for every struggle that I'm having right now, and my there is one there was one student that once uh, shared like she said, oh, I'm ha I'm Ustad, I'm having so many struggles with learning the Arabic alphabet. I'm having I don't know how, how I'm trying to read and I'm trying to like uh, recite the Quran a little bit, but it's never very good. And I, then I asked her, so how do you want your recitation to be? And she said, well, I want it to be like yours, meaning like the teachers. Meaning, she wanted to be her recitation to be like someone who has been reading the Quran for the last 10, 20 years or more. This is not something that you should expect from yourself. At the beginning, you should act and you should accept that you are a beginner. And that's completely fine, subhanAllah. Every part of the process has its pros, has its benefits. And the whole process of you learning and even struggling is something that Allah will reward you for. 
<laughs> you should not be despair because you're struggling. Of course, that struggle should motivate you to push forward, to improve, to make yourself better, etc. But it should not kind of demotivate you and make you depressed because now you're not reciting like the issue like Mishari, Minshavi, and Khusari and all of those. It's not even expected from you. No one expects from you to start reading the Quran at the beginning. Then you are like a pro. No. At the beginning, you are a beginner, and that's completely fine. You're going to read some letters very good. Some other letters, like you will struggle with them, and that's completely fine. All of your teachers, everyone here who has taught the Quran has gone through that process, and no one was uh, saved from the struggles. There is no like this diplomatic passport of, or this this like special visa for someone who who will not struggle with them the letters there is no such thing even the teachers like who are uh, so good in the recitation they sometimes have struggles with some letters or pronunciations or um reading or any part of it subhanallah so accept the whole process rely on allah throughout the whole process as he's the one who is going to help you push you and uh, be with you throughout the whole process and in the end he is the one who is going to reward you because the knowledge that you're going to learn through the Arabic alphabet in the Quran, in every part of the Quran in general, is going to be such re so rewarding for yourself. You will feel so happy that you learned that, that you uh, attained that knowledge, obtained that knowledge. Um, there were students, for example, who would say, uh, there is nothing as valuable to me in my life than this that Allah has taught me that I have thought, learned throughout these courses of the Quran either Quranic alphabet tajweed or any part of it so uh, that's kind of it uh, may Allah make it easy for anyone who is uh, start to who is starting to make the whole journey of learning the Arabic alphabet may Allah make it easy for everyone who is in that process and <clears throat> is struggling or not um, may Allah make it easy for everyone who is finishing the whole that uh, part of that process and starting a new one. And may Allah give us barakah and uh, may Allah reward all of you who are um, who are wanting to be a part of the journey of becoming closer to Allah in any any way we can. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We just listened to an amazing presentation by Ustaza Amina Muyala Botich. Welcome Ustaza Amina and thank you for joining us in this Q&A session. Thank you very much for inviting me to the Arabic Unlocked Summit. Um, I'm so happy to be a part of this uh, whole journey with you. And may Allah give us barakah in today's Q&A session and the whole summit in general. May people, many people benefit from it, inshallah. Ameen, ameen. for your dua. We are honored to have you here. And um, your presentation was very eye-opening. I think it would be very helpful for a lot of Muslims who have fears about learning the Arabic alphabet, um, which which is uh, which is something that I think a lot of a lot of people face, especially as adults when when they're learning something new. You know, so I, I would just like to go in and uh, dive deeper into a few questions based on your presentation, if I may. Um, of course. The first uh, the first question is: um, You mentioned the importance of uh, intention. And uh, of course, intention is very important in everything that we do as Muslims. Uh, but could you elaborate a little bit further on, on what are the intentions that someone should have before they even start the process of learning the Arabic alphabet? You know, um, and, and, and why, why, why is it uh, just, uh, wh why should they even begin the journey, you know, when, when there's translations of the Quran? If you could uh, elaborate on that, please. Of course, uh, Bismillahi walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa malulah. Um, so learning Arabic alphabet, what's the big deal? Why is it important? Why should someone even start the journey? That's one of the things that people really think about before they even start the whole process or even think about joining a course or starting to learn on their own or um, 
continuing, let's say, with a course that they already started in general. So why should we learn Arabic? First of all, because since we are, as a Muslims, we always try our best in every single day, in every way we can, to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah, as our Lord, as our God, has chosen for us that he wants to reveal the book of his, that he wants to uh, make his final divine revelation in Arabic language. So mm -hmm. that's kind of a message for us in itself, that we, uh, to, in order to get closer to Allah, we can use this language as a tool to get closer to him. Second of all, not, to, not even uh, if we just remember that Arabic is a language of people of Jannah, subhanAllah. So kind of every, uh, there is a barakah in this language that m m other languages don't have in itself because yeah. it's a language that Allah has chosen for us. Uh, and also learning any type of a new language, learning any type of a new alphabet, learning any new letters, any uh, new knowledge that can benefit us brings barakah in itself. Knowledge brings barakah in our, our, in our lives. So mm -hmm. when you start learning Arabic or as a language or through the letters or in any way in general, uh, you feel how rich and how so full of uh, wisdom this language is and how every mm -hmm. single letter is there with a purpose and if you open the Quran and mm -hmm. then you know these letters and you know how to pronounce them and you know how to read them and if, especially if you know let later on how to understand them then mm -hmm. subhanAllah you get this completely new approach completely new perspective on what Allah wants from me what Allah is teaching telling me in his uh, in his uh, in his book what Allah what uh, what are the ways that I can get closer to Allah how I can change, how can I be become better. The Arabic language, Arabic letters, every single aspect of Arabic um, that we learn because of Allah, to get closer to Allah will bring us closer to him. And that's the beauty of, of the whole process of learning. And if you ask me about the intention in general, we know how important the intention is and we have spoken about it. But <clears throat> if we do something, for example, for the sake of Allah, we we want to get closer to Allah through something, through a good deed, through sadaqah, through learning a new knowledge, through uh, praying, for, through being kind to one another, through any way. Um, that's a good deed in itself. However, if you look mm -hmm. at the Quranic alphabet, if you look at the Arabic letters in general and the process of learning mm -hmm. Arabic uh, letters in general, since I'm focusing on that, it's going to be a process. It's not something that you sit in one time and you um, learn and you finish that and then you continue with your life and then nothing changes there. <laughs> this is a process that starts with, at one point that has its like stages where it gets challenging, hard, easy yeah. sometimes. Um, beneficial in all of the times etc and it yeah. comes to a certain end so you need um, not only that intention at the beginning but you need intention at every step of the way because you have to remind yourself why did I even start this why yeah. is it this important for me so yeah. that's why we should that's why we learn to remember Allah because if we learn to remember Allah, to, re uh, to to be mindful of Him throughout the process, then He will help us, not only throughout the process to learn, but He will re uh, help us to remember Him more often, to renew our intentions, um, to become yes. better throughout the whole process. So yes. the whole process of learning Arabic letters or Arabic language or the Quran in any way is uh, changing us from the inside. We should never be the same before we start the learning Arabic letters or any part of the Quran and after we um, learn throughout uh, for a, a couple of months or after a couple of oh, a period of time, etc. So it goes beyond just learning something intellectually. It is, you know, with the right intention, it is a, a, a transformation a, a process that's, you know, uh, deep internal process. Exactly, exactly, completely. Uh, it's it's how we approach it in general. There are yeah. people who go to college or study, become, start studying something and they like go from point A to point B. They have learned all of these information. Um, yeah. They know so much, but they didn't change. Something yeah. did not, uh, they didn't become better people. We should not do this with any aspect of our deen in general including learning Arabic alphabet or learning Arabic in general or learning the Quran. Yeah, This process we should learn with our minds, but also with our hearts, that we yeah. connect with our whole uh, being, 
with what we are learning subhanallah and that that That's is how we learn it most <clears throat> yeah and that is that is the the connection to allah isn't it when we when we approach approach it in that in that mindset and with that open heart exactly so so in terms of the process that you were saying there were going to be ups and downs and challenging moments for sure and a, a lot of people you know it's when they hit that roadblock that that challenge that they feel like giving up the most and that's probably when they, you know they, they lose consistency and and um things that happen in life you know like oh my kids need me or i i i've got this important work project and you know when, when you hit that when you hit that roadblock when you hit that challenge all the other things in in your life just suddenly become like more urgent and and it's hard to remain consistent so what advice do you have for someone um you know when they when they're hitting those challenging moments um and and life gets so busy uh what what can they do what, or what can they focus on when they when they review, even if they don't have much time, but to maximize the results that they get from every review and to help them stay consistent so they can keep progressing? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I noticed <clears throat> throughout this whole process of uh, teaching uh, the Quranic alphabet and so many students um, that I have met throughout these years is that um, focus is the main point. Just as mm -hmm. you, know, you can focus or not focus on when learning something else that's how you can do as well in the quranic alphabet let me give you an example for example student starts learning and then these obligations these the challenges come through struggles etc and they get so overwhelmed uh, that mm -hmm. they know what should i do now where should, yeah. what should i focus on yeah. uh, i'm this is taking too much so much of my time in, in general mm -hmm. etc so focusing on when the main points of what is important for me to learn in when I learned the Quranic alphabet, what is important for me to learn regarding Arabic letters? So what this is what I tell to my students. Okay, every single letter in Arabic language has um, a couple of characteristics. First one is the so-called makhraj, the pronunciation of the letter, the articulation mm -hmm. of the letter, meaning that every single letter that we pronounce when we read the Quran, speak Arabic, is coming from a certain point in our mouth uh, or from our throat. Yeah. So um, to be able to kind of focus in learning, you we have to master where should I put my tongue, where should I, where does this kind of voice coming come out of my mouth, etc. In general, mm -hmm. second aspect of every single Arabic letter is the so-called sifa, or the or the features or characteristics of each of the Arabic alphabet, meaning like some letters are. A little bit like harder where you, you use a little bit more of the tongue some letters are have this some something that is called istiqala some have something that is called shidda some of them have something that is called hems and this is what makes each one of the letters different for example if you see letters ta, dal, and ta. They all mm -hmm. come from the same area of pronunciation. Yeah. However, each one of them are completely different letters. And what is yeah. what it makes them different? The features, the characteristics of each of those letters, subhanAllah. Yeah. Um, and if they focus on mastering those two regarding each one of the letters, that will help them, help them throughout the process. Second of all, <clears throat> Um, okay, now I know where should I put my tongue, but how does it look like? How do, how do I sound? Uh, what should I correct? What should I improve? So what I usually tell to my students is that mirror is your very good friend in learning Arabic language or learning mm -hmm. Arabic letters in general. So yeah. um, what, you, what you can do, what, you, what I usually advise my students is to uh, put a mirror in front of yourself and look the shape of your mouth when you're pronouncing a certain letter. How does my mouth look when I pronounce, the, let's say, the vowels, the, especially the lamma, for example, which is very visible on our mouth? How does my, uh, my, my mouth look like when I pronounce these or that, those letters? Where do I put my tongue? Is it visible on the, on the mirror? And then if I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, I can always refer to a certain video for example as there are now for many many videos online many youtube channels that are uh, dealing with these um uh, with pronunciation with pronunciations with sifat etc so okay i can see the sheikh or sheikha i can see mm -hmm. this teacher who is pronouncing it very well on that on the video mm -hmm. let me try to copy that let me see how 
uh, how my mouth can look like theirs when I'm pronouncing yeah. the, these letters. Yeah. And this is something that helps a lot. Uh, also, so for example, that's something that helped me throughout our journey and helps many students as well is recording yourself. For example, mm. if you if you have um, a Arabic letters notebook and you like have these reading exercises where you like go line by one line and practice the reading and uh, pronunciation of each of the letters. Um, students sometimes get shy of listening to themselves and they yeah. like don't like listening to their voices and that's completely normal yes. but this is for the sake of learning and improving record yourself and listen to yourself kind of check your, your yourself how did you pronounce how did you read did you make mistakes in this in pronunciation of vowels or uh, did i pronounce the correct vowel on a letter or not did they pronounce this letter correctly etc and if you have a teacher for example who is guiding you through that process mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you let's say you went through um those couple of materials with your teacher you can always come back to your teacher if you're not sure where uh, if something was not very clear you didn't know how to uh pronounce certain things things you um, were struggling etc your teacher is a very important person in your process of learning because she or yeah. he has went through that whole process by herself or himself and he knows yeah. what you're struggling with yeah, they have exactly. probably went through the whole same thing yeah. they went they came to complain to their teachers as well and like <laughs> they were struggling as well and that's completely yeah. normal that's how we learn and that's how we connect with our teachers and that's how we improve the process of learning in general and just to put to finish this out everyone every single person in this world has struggles no one is free from that i have I have had students who would join to the class, believe it or, mm -hmm. or not, it was like 2 a.m. in their time zone, subhanAllah. <laughs> I have had students who would join from hospital. They were like, I'm, I have just a quick break and I have to join because this is very important for me to learn. Yeah. I have had students who had like kids around them, like jumping all around, etc. Yep. They were, yep. but they were still joined. They still yeah. joined. I have yeah. had students who were having issues, let's say, pronouncing letter ra or letter many of those, like especially the throat letters, which yeah, are sometimes yeah. very uh, hard to pronounce mm -hmm. for for us yeah. uh, non-Arab speakers. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but that's <clears throat> but all of it is okay. That yeah, they yeah. still joined. They put the 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 effort. That's the most important thing, and that's what Allah rewards us for. Did yeah. I do my best? Did I do my best to start learning? Did I do my best in the process of learning? Did I put ihsan, the the mm -hmm. the best that I could in that cert certain process? That's yeah. what I. That's what, that's the most important thing. Uh, the results will come. I have no doubt about it. Allah will give us results. It the results are in His hands. The yes. effort is what I can do. So yeah, that's kind Absolutely. of sometimes some, something that as they have noticed throughout the process is some of the main struggles and. These students, when they would join and like at their time zone, in their workplace, in their in the yeah. whole household are surrounded by all of this, uh, all of these people, etc. This is this was such an inspiration for me first. If they yeah. can do it, why can I not do it? Yeah. If they cannot, if they join, why should, should shouldn't I join? That our yeah. children is our um our work in general. This not should not be our um the uh, stone to kind of block us from the past but mm -hmm. something that motivates what motivates us further okay if i can do this then for sure i can do this as well inshallah yeah. with a lot yeah. of hope inshallah may allah make it easy i mean yes exactly mm -hmm. <laughs> so that that's that's really encouraging to hear that you know even if you're a busy person or if you know um you got work you got kids you know that is still a way um you know we put our minds to it and and we we place our intention and our trust in Allah because as you said the results are with, with Allah so all we have to do is show up and you know not put any pressure on ourselves to try and get the result um and that's that's an amazing reminder so I, I like how you mentioned about the the makhraj earlier and you know how people were struggling with the makhraj and and I know that this can be you know something that makes people very upset or feel like or oh, they're not going to be good enough if they if they if they can't get the, the sound right because um i mean some some people have speech impediments right like um for me i'm 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 tongue-tied um so i can't pronounce the letter r 
not in English <laughs> and not not raw in Arabic either. You know, so so I I, I um you know unless I get surgery, I will constantly have this you know this uh, disability of the, of the tongue. So you know, and that that has gotten me down before. You know, so I I will feel like oh I can't I can't perfect my recitation and I can't get makhraj right for for all these other letters like you know it's also hard for me to do the the, the back of the tongue letters like ba and all that so you know it slows down my recitation and stuff so what advice would you give to someone like me you know who you know who could feel a, a little bit down or, or despondent that we can't physically get it right mm -hmm. <laughs> no matter how much we try subhanallah may allah reward you for uh, asking that question <laughs> I will repeat one statement from the previous question. Everyone has struggles. Everyone yeah. has different types of struggles in their lives. Someone <clears throat> has a struggle with the pronunciation. They cannot put the tongue on the right place. Someone has a, a struggle with pronouncing certain like uh, features of a letter, how istifala, let's say, of the blood, or uh, takrir of the ra, or any part of the letter. Uh, but on the other hand, someone has struggles with, I cannot um i am not perfect and sh that's why i should not do this at all like the mm -hmm. perfectionism is a struggle that they are having someone yeah. has a struggle of not having enough time at all they are like work working 12 hours a day or even more than that and they yeah, come home yeah. and everything is waiting for them and they should come to their kids to their spouses and work on all of that and then at the end of the day they are like exhausted they cannot they don't know what they're they're doing it with themselves yeah. and now I should start learning. So yeah. just first of all, to accept this, just as other people are struggling with something else, this is the struggle that I, I have to carry and I'm carrying. And on the other hand, Allah gave it to me because he knew that I can do this, that mm -hmm. I can carry this struggle strongly yeah. and that he will teach me to be stronger through it. He is teaching me through a, through a struggle something about myself or something about him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wow. So if a person, for example, is struggling with, let's say, now focus on, on um, the speech impediment, um, what these are some, some things that I would uh, recommend. First of all, we always return back to Allah. There is a story that I sometimes share with my students, and it is about um, a very famous sheikh, but I... I it, it, the, currently I cannot remember his name may Allah forgive me but he was also struggling with pronunciation the letter uh, mm -hmm. the letter R uh, the mm -hmm. Ra in Arabic mm -hmm. and he was like and he could he uh, recited the whole Quran in front of his teacher and the teacher told him everything is good you're pronouncing everything good but I cannot give you the ijaza, the diploma the certificate of no. recitation of the Quran because of the letter R so oh, no. This is the advice he gave him. So he told him, go to Umrah, go to Mecca, and uh, make a, a lot of dua to Allah in that process, especially in the place, I think it was near Maqam Ibrahim, I think. Focus there and make a lot of dua to Allah that he removes that struggle from you, that he makes it easy for you. So this is what he did as well. He went there, mm -hmm. he uh, make, made a lot of dua, he prayed a lot, mm -hmm. he returned, and he like this was like completely this changed allah what knows how mean? and how allah knows how, what happened but it changed so i'm not uh, i'm not telling you that okay all of these miracles are going to still uh, start <laughs> happening around <laughs> you everything is like going to fall fall down from the sky no but the first <laughs> one who to whom we are speaking when we are, have any type of a struggle in our lives any type of a difficulty in our lives is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i should ask him first to help me with my struggle including any type of a uh, struggle and I should know and be aware, okay, Allah, you gave this to me to teach me something through this. Mm -hmm. Because you, mm -hmm. Allah, knew that I can carry this struggle and you didn't give that, that to someone else because you knew that that person maybe would not be able to carry that struggle. So yeah. you will yeah. make me strong through this process that I'm learning. Second of all, I'm sorry, uh, you, did you want to say something? Yeah, so I was just I was just going to point out, like, so even even in the struggle, um, that is part of the process in getting closer to Allah, um, you know, as, as part of the learning journey. It's not just the destination. It's not just once we learn, then we become close to Allah. It's actually part of it, that the struggle has to be there because that is um, what, what we need, what Allah wants us to have to bring us closer to him.
Exactly. That's the, the that's exactly the second point that I wanted to make. <laughs> we sometimes focus so much on the results, on mm -hmm. how my pronunciation will be perfect after this, how yeah. I'll be reading perfectly like this sheikh or that sheikh. <laughs> I will be like reciting like us like a bird who is singing, etc. <laughs> but that's not the point. That's not yeah. the point. The yeah. results are not with us. The results are with Allah. The mm -hmm. the only thing that we should perf perfect in the whole process of learning is the effort that we put in and we again get back to that point that I do my best to improve as much as I can I practice every day I go to my teacher and he listens to me or she listens to my recitation she tells me okay you have improved a little bit try this try that and I do that constantly I improve and try again and again and again if Allah gives it to me Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, he gave it to me. If he doesn't give it to me, Alhamdulillah again, because this is still some, uh, this is my path that he wants me to get back to him. And this is the path that I'm taking that inshallah will give, get, get me to Jannah because that's the person. Why, why am I learning? Why am I studying? Why am I, uh, do I want to recite the Quran, learn all of these things to get to Jannah, of course. Of course. So if this is the path I need to take, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. But as long as my connection with Allah stays strong, that's the point in, in the end. That's yeah. beautiful. I love how you how you said that so beautifully. So now let's say we do get to the end result. Someone does get to the end result of learning the Arabic alphabet. So Alhamdulillah. What is the next step? What can they expect in terms of what should I study next? You know, and I'm sure a lot of people will ask how fast before I can recite the Quran. Mm. Um, okay, first thing, what should I not expect? Let's say that. And that okay. is, I should not expect again to recite like a sheikh. I had one student, I think I have mentioned this, uh, that, uh, and she asked me, uh, when will I be able to recite like you, Ustada? And she was, mm -hmm. and, and I told her, well, how much, are, how long are you learning? And she's learning like for two months or three months, and she wants right away to recite like someone who has recited for like the last 20 years. And yeah. I had my struggles, and I still have my struggles. I, my yeah. teacher still corrects me in my pronunciation. This is a whole <laughs> life journey. So yeah. you should not expect from yourself to recite right away uh, as someone who has a lot of experience. But what you should do, and what you can do after you, after you finish the um, uh, let's say you have um, mastered the pronunciations the um, you know how to pronounce each of the letters and now you're you can recognize them etc what you can do is first of all open your quran that's the reason what that's one of the reasons why you started learning the, the arabic alphabet you yeah. open the quran and you try reading what you can read. You don't have to apply the tajweed rules, the all of those like rules that are applied throughout the Quran right away. No, you read what you can read at that moment. You are going to struggle. One page is probably going to take you an hour or two hours or even more. But that's completely fine. That's the beginning of your process. And enjoy mm -hmm. that process. Enjoy it. Because yesterday you maybe didn't even know how to read any of those letters. Now you can recognize them. You can read them. You're able to see mm -hmm. them and pronounce them. That's a blessing of Allah subhanahu yes. wa ta'ala. Use it and enjoy it. Yes, for every blessing, yes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Feel grateful. Allah has blessed me. I can now open the Quran and I can now recognize the letters that I'm reading. I'm able to read at least as slow as I'm reading. Okay, that's fine. But I'm reading, alhamdulillah. And then um, don't give up. Um, don't make the Quran like... Uh, a family member that you visit, visit just like from time to time or call mm -hmm. from time to time. No, yeah. this is your companion or a family member that you see and talk to every single day. You're just mm -hmm. like your children, just like your spouse. This is your friend that you need every day. Yeah. Um, after you finish the uh, alphabets, after you finish the letters, <clears throat> open the and start the process of making the Quran your daily, daily companion, meaning that I have a day, that I have a time in every that every every single day that is intended for me and my Allah through his words. This is me connecting to Allah through his yes. words. And this is my time with the Quran, 
no one is should take this from me because this is my yes. precious time that I have with the Quran. You are mm -hmm. going to feel so much more baraka in your life when you connect, um, when you make this your daily uh, routine. Let's say just like you have these routines of mm -hmm. uh, jogging, of like doing these exercises, walking, etc. This is a part of my daily routine that I feel alive when I do it. If I don't yeah. do it, it's as if I'm like stuck somewhere and I'm not like feeling very well, etc. But that's mm -hmm. you, that's you nourishing your, your spirituality. That's you nourishing your inside and not only focusing on the outside that we usually do. So, um, so that's don't, don't wait until you join another course or another teacher for you to continue your quran journey no 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 it should start right away as much as you can slowly as it slows but it should start start right away next step after that should be to um um to try to find try to try to find or to continue with your uh, current teacher with trying to again improve your recitation because of course um just as the Prophet ﷺ said, recite the Quran just as you are taught. So there is the barakah of reciting and learning the Quran with a teacher. So try to find someone who is going to help you in that process of uh, improving your recitation. Um, the, the recitation in general has is its levels or has its stages, so to say, just as you're like climbing these stairs up and up and slowly going to the top. So what this is what I give to my, tell to my students. Start with recognizing uh, letters individually. That's what we do in the Arabic alphabet. We go like the, the, do letter by letter, one by one. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then we jump to the second uh, level Level, and that is um, connecting, let's say, two letters in a word, like pronouncing them in one breath, let's say, to, uh, mm. connecting them together. Uh, mm. Let's say, very, zudi, just an example, like uh, making like these small connections inside of a word. Next step should be, okay, now we have mastered that. Let's let's try to connect the whole word. Let's try to pronounce or uh, let's try to say the whole word at once. Um, Lehun, um, Jannatu, etc. Like, okay, now we are making the words out of this these small steps that we yeah. have gone through together. Yeah. And the last step is binding the words, connecting the words together, pronouncing them together. And that's what uh, that's the process that starts in the Arabic alphabet and then continues, continues, continues mm -hmm. until we are like in the in the levels level when the angels are around us when we recite the Quran, etc. So mm -hmm. that's inshallah the final, the, the top stairs, let's say the top of yes. the stairs. But yeah. you have to go through all of these processes one by one, step by step, little by little, until you come to there. You cannot, like we sometimes want to jump right away to the top. No, that's not how yeah, Quran yeah, works. Yeah. That's how, how, how this works. You have to give yourself time, patience, a lot of love to yourself throughout the process, uh, forgiveness yes. to yourself yes. for the mistakes, for not being perfect. All of it is fine. Allah yeah. knows that we're not, not perfect, but he is still gave us to do the, the, these things because he knows that it will benefit us, inshallah. That's that's an amazing reminder and thank you for sharing that. I think it, I mean, it really hit me in a, in a heart. You got you got me going, got the feels with all of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and I think when we remember that in our journey, that it is, that this is our journey with Allah and this is our way of getting closer to Allah, that it's not about comparing ourselves to someone else and you know falling into that whole comparatitis uh thing going on and which is which is very difficult you know in the age of social media that we have you know we're always you know seeing someone else who has something better or someone else who's doing better so you know um having the quran to ground us like that um and and just remind us that it is all about the connection that we have with Allah and, and what our intention is. That's that's just beautiful. So thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Alhamdulillah. Everything that I say that is good is always from Allah. Everything that I say that is not gonna benefit someone, just this is just for myself and all, all the bad is from our the, the, uh, our nefs, so to say. So Alhamdulillah. May Allah give us better clean it. Amen. Okay, so um before you go. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you do at Jannah Institute and the department Rivers of Jannah? 
Okay, of course. So um, the Rivers of Jannah is a Quranic department at at, um, at Jannah Institute, focused mm -hmm. on teaching the Quran, the Quranic alphabet, Tajweed, etc. So mm -hmm. we usually have uh, three or four semesters in a year, uh, focused on having co courses like these basic of Quranic alphabet um, and others, uh, Tajweed mm -hmm. basic or advanced levels, etc. So um, yeah, that's what we usually do. Like we try to offer a student who joins um, our courses, like uh, options to join either the beginner's course, uh, if you're a beginner in learning, or if you are already started, but you're stuck somewhere to help you in that uh, in that process as well. Or if you're an advanced student, you want to even start memorizing, we often, uh, we offer those types of courses in general. We, we, we have um, the fall, spring and summer semester, and we usually have the Ramadan semester as well. So Alhamdulillah, that's a blessing of being a part of this institute to be able to <laughs> contribute to the journeys of uh, the Quran to many, many students out there. And Alhamdulillah for that. That blessing. So are these courses uh, um, online or are they uh, in person? All of, all of them are online, alhamdulillah, all of them are online. Yeah. So it's accessible to everyone around the world. Inshallah. Exactly, alhamdulillah. And I, we have had students like, uh, you name the country, we have had students from there. Uh -huh. <laughs> Even like from Russia, from uh, the UK, from France, from uh, Bosnia as well, from Turkey, from it's all around the world, alhamdulillah. That's the blessing of having these online online communities and being able to teach online that alhamdulillah, there are no boundaries or there are no, there are no um, restrictions to it, so to say. There are no, uh, we're not stuck anymore to the Place, but now we cannot we can connect alhamdulillah throughout the whole world without uh, even having to move out move outside our <laughs> homes alhamdulillah and alhamdulillah this is a blessing mm -hmm. of uh the, of of this summit as well alhamdulillah since uh, yes. i'm from bosnia you are joining me from malaysia, malaysia alhamdulillah yes. and like we're <laughs> able to speak in this way and connect through yes. this way and we're inside of our homes and alhamdulillah for that blessing it's a huge huge blessing from allah alhamdulillah it is indeed, indeed. so if someone was interested to learn more about the rivers of jannah where where can they go how what was uh, what's the website that they can check out of course, uh, they can go to www.jannainstitute.org um, or they can visit our social media pages, Facebook or Instagram. Uh, and that's where we usually promote our um, our courses and uh, all of the programs that we offer in general at, at Jannain Institute. Okay. So welcome to, to join us, inshallah, there. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And just to wrap things up now, Jazakillah Khair for everything that you have shared. Um, may Allah accept and may it bring benefit to the people who are watching and listening. And um, yeah, we are very honored to have you and thank you so much once again. Thank you so much. May Allah reward you as well uh, for inviting me and may Allah give us, as, just as you said, may Allah give us barakah in this whole process of uh, learning, studying and this whole summit. May Allah give a barakah in it and uh, may Allah help us in our paths to him and may Allah remove the obstacles of the uh, from us on that path that are uh, to get closer to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.